Hey guys, I thought I'd make a video today of what we've got going on here in my garden. I thought I'd just give you a tour of what we've got planted on the garden, how it's coming along, uh, kind of what I do and how I lay it out and why I lay it out and the things that I do with it. Uh, I thought I should go through it real quick and just kind of show you guys, a, just give you guys a walk around tour. Uh, I thought about trying to make some videos that would cover like the garden from the start, you know, where we break it up and then we we put any kind of fertilizer down and then we, we come in and we we take and we, we plant it and everything like that. But that is so much it's, a garden is so much work just doing the garden and it adds an extra something to it when you try to film that so i didn't want to try to fool with all that this time maybe later on but what i'll do is i'll try to take an occasional video to show the progress and the update on the on the on the garden spot so let's get into trying to uh on the tour all right guys first thing i'll show you is what we're coming up on is how i plant my cucumbers so what i do is I'll get this cattle panel that you see here with the metal fence post and I'll tie the cattle panel off to those fence posts and I'll come in and I'll plant my cucumbers on each side of this cattle panel and as they grow I'll try to point them to to run up this cattle panel and what that does is these cucumbers they will run you know if you leave them on the ground they will run and they'll cover so much area and they cut, take up a lot of room in your garden. So doing this kind of kind of keeps that from happening. So they grow up the panel. And what you'll do is you'll come in and you'll you'll pick your cucumbers off this cattle panel. Kind of like we'll come around. And I'll show you this one here. You can see this this cucumber here, kind of hanging there. You can see him. You can see another one, small one in here growing. There's some on this, this plant here. They're, they're coming along. You can see the blooms on them. See a little cucumber growing here. What we'll do is we'll run them up this panel and it'll fill this panel up. And, and then you'll have basically a wall of, of cucumbers. All right, so the next thing I do, we've got here is we've got our pink eyed purple hull peas. I think we have eight rows of these eight long rows and two shorter rows over here you can see the middles are pretty clean i ran through them with the garden tiller and you have to keep the grass out of these peas if you want peas if you're going to make peas you cannot have grass in them i come in i run the garden tiller like i said down the middles knock the grass out of the middles right up to the edge of the plant and then i have to take our garden hoe and i'll go down each row and i'll remove the grass with that garden hoe out from underneath the peas i lack i think these last five rows getting the grass out of them you can see some grass right here that's actually nuts edge grass it's terrible but i'll have to go in and pull that out because if you don't pull that grass out it will affect your pea crop is what it'll do affect the yields on the peas so peas are a lot of work in the garden i don't plant them every year I try to plant them every other year. I'll harvest enough peas out of what I do plant that year to where we shouldn't have to fool with them. Truth be told, I shouldn't have to fool with them about every third year, but I do it every other year because I have family members who like them too and they'll come out and they'll, they'll get them some out of it too. My brother-in-law helps me a lot with it because he's one of them. He really likes the peas. So he'll come out and help me. He helped me plant them. And, do everything with those uh we'll come down here while we're talking about the peas we came in and we planted three more rows of peas here these were planted later so it should be when we're done harvesting the peas out of this this little section this little patch up here these should be coming in and we'll fall right into these truth be told i just planted them here because it's a wetter end of the garden. It's a lower end, so it holds moisture a little better. 
I planted them here because the spot was empty and all I'd be growing here is weeds and grass if I didn't plant the peas. So I have these peas planted there so there'll be a later later batch. This uh this is my lone cu uh not cucumber. This is my lone watermelon plant. My buddy up the hill, we planted about 15 hills of cucumbers up the hill and he, we had one left so I brought it down here. I didn't want to see it go to waste. So I just brought it down here. I dug a hole. It's probably going to end up running into the peas and the everything. It's going to be a, a cluster muck down here. But whatever. If it grows a watermelon, so be it. The others you can see here, there, over there, there, and there. There's five cucumber plants. We had to replant our cucumbers, and my buddy had several plants left and i didn't want to see them go to waste i just i hated to see them them die in that little container that they came in so i just brought them down here dug a hole and threw them in the in the dirt if they make any cucumbers at all that's great somebody will have cucumbers if not nothing really lost uh this row right here this row that you see right here this is our okra say well that's not very much okra man this okra if it makes it will put on more okra than what you'll know what to do with okra is something that you'll pick okra until a frost usually i get tired of it so i'll let the electric fence that i have going around the garden down and i'll let the deer come in and they'll they'll take care of it somehow those deer i don't know how they do it but those okra salts will be 10 12 foot tall and you come out here the next day and there won't be a leaf on it. They will have eaten all the leaves off of it. All right, what we have here, this is our snap beans. I plant a Blue Lake pole bean. So a pole bean means that it runs. It has runners. You can see them kind of running. And what we did is we put these posts up on each end, metal fence post in the center to keep it from kind of, kind of stable from the wind. And what we'll do is we'll plant the snap beans on each side of, of that, that wire, what we call dog wire. And they'll run to that, that wire. You can see kind of them running to it. And they'll grow all the way up the top of this thing. And there'll be snap beans. More snap beans than what you'll care to pick. Uh, should be a lot of beans this time. They, they, you can see they made, they did really well. I've got to get the grass and weeds out of those too but i'm gonna wait till after a rain because if you disturb your dirt when the when the ground's dry all it does is let moisture out of the ground for that that plant's going to need so it dries the ground out around that plant and it puts basically removes the water from the soil and then it makes it hard for your plants to to have access to water so i'll wait a couple of days after rain i'll come in and i'll start hoeing these all right what we'll go through now this is our tomatoes you can kind of see there's quite a few tomatoes in this uh in our garden uh i think i planted i want to say it was 54 but i may be wrong on that number it may be 57 i can't remember i counted them one time and it's just a lot of a lot of tomatoes uh for some reason i get I plant several different varieties is why I have so many, to be honest with you. I plant a big boy variety, a better boy, early girl, which by their name, they are tomatoes that, that will ripen and they'll be on the vine and ripen sooner than any of the other varieties. That's where they get the name early girl. I'll plant a uh, Parks Whopper, which is a very large beefy tomato. And then I'll plant a Creole variety which is a very heat tolerant drought resistant tomato plant so if you have a summer where you you don't actually have a lot of a lot of water those tomatoes will still they'll, they'll be out here thriving where the others are drawing back they won't they won't be growing they'll be dormant from their growth and those creole tend to do real well so i plant several different varieties in case i have one variety or the other not go very well i'll have i'll make sure i'll have tomatoes that way 
you can see there's quite a few they're growing they're not where they're where i want them to be right now but they're they're not doing bad they need a rain if i could get a rain on them they'd be doing a lot better uh these cages you can see a cage them that's to kind of keep them keep them supported they'll lean on that cage to grow some of the cages are taller than others the shorter cages once the tomato grows above it and it will i'll take some ribbon like this and i'll tie around that plant and i'll give it more support kind of build a cage going upward these other ones you can see how tall these cages are that's not by mistake that's that plant if he grows like he should that plant will be to the top probably 12 to 24 inches above the top of that cage right there so they'll grow really tall and do really well i'll kind of show you some tomatoes if i can get in there and show you some there's some here you can see a few more there each plant has some on it you know they're kind of growing and they've got you see the bloom several blooms on them blooms coming on here several tomatoes in there there we will have more tomatoes than what we know what to do with my wife will actually tell me stop bringing tomatoes home i do not want any more tomatoes i don't know what the deal is she's just not a you know she's not a worker like i am <laughs> anyways we'll move on from the tomatoes well before i do i'll say this you probably see these grass patches in my in my tomato patch right here the reason these grass patches are in here is because i don't come in here and i don't till the ground i don't try to get all the grass up with these tomato plants it's gonna sound lazy but i get my weed eater and i come in here when i get tired of walking through tall grass i just take my weed eater and i weed eat my garden you know my my buddies kind of laugh at me but hey it works it saves a lot of work versus trying to keep all this grass and weeds out of them i have enough work in the peas and the corn and everything else to keep the grass out of that and the weeds out of that so in these tomatoes it doesn't matter i come in here i weed eat it and i'll get in the cages and i'll pull some of the bigger weeds and grasses out of the from underneath the cages so they won't compete with the tomato for nutrients but otherwise i'm weed eating this sucker all right moving on we'll come up here this is our peppers. I have several different types of peppers planted here. There's, there's the jalapenos. You can see some jalapenos on here. They're smaller, but I'm gonna get them off that plant because they're, when these plants are young, the, the, the peppers and things like that, they're pretty taxing on a, on a plant. So I pull them off fairly early. And then as that plant gets bigger and more hardy, I'll let them stay on. And these, these jalapenos will be about three times the size of these. Uh, I've got jalapenos in here. I've got sweet, no, let me back up. I have hot banana pepper this year. I normally plant sweet, so I thought I'd try the hot. And then I have cayenne pepper planted in here. Uh, the cayenne, I'll be honest with you, I like hot pepper, but I cannot eat that cayenne pepper after so many days in that garden. As the summer comes on, that stuff will get so hot. So what I do with it is I put them in a jar and I make pepper sauce out of them. So that's our, our pepper plants. You can kind of see, you know, they are what they are. They're kind of, they're growing. I mean, they're, they're coming along. We'll move into our squash and zucchini. Uh, some of them aren't doing real well. Some of them are doing really well. You can kind of look through over it and see there's several plants that are coming along. They've got several zucchini on them coming on. I've actually picked a couple, my first ones already. Uh, there's some crook neck squash and some straight neck squash in here. Uh, when I bought my plants, I thought they were all going to be straight neck. Somebody mislabeled the squash. You can see these crook neck here. You can see him. 
that crook neck squash. I really didn't want the crook neck. It's not that I don't like them. It's just that uh, you're, some of you guys probably already know this, but bees, they'll come in and they'll pollinate the crook neck squash plants uh, bloom. And then they'll fly over and they'll get on the cucumber bloom and they'll cross pollinate. So what you'll do is you'll get cucumbers that look like crook neck squash. And when you try to give those to somebody or you say, hey, would you like some cucumbers? And you pull out something that looks like a green cook, crook neck squash. You just have to do a lot of explaining and I'd rather not do that. So I just get the straight neck squash and that way the cucumbers will look like a cucumber and the squash will look like a, a squash. A lot of people didn't know that they would cross pollinate like that. I found out the hard way. I planted my cucumbers right next to my squash and I was getting some really odd stuff and I didn't, didn't dawn on me until I about halfway through a summer and I, I kind of saw those bees pollinating them. I said, that's what's going on. So now I plant my cucumbers on one end and my squash on the other. I don't plant them next to one another. I mean, it helps. It doesn't eliminate all of it, but it does help, believe it or not, because, you know, you can't control what Mother Nature and where a bee flies and what a bee pollinates and what he doesn't. So, but you can kind of separate them to where maybe it won't happen as often. Well, anyways, that's a, well, I think I left out one of the most important things. I, I was about to say that's all, but I left out one of my most favorite things to grow in the garden. I love to grow corn. Uh, this is our sweet, sweet corn patch. It's a, what they call a peaches and cream variety. I planted this same variety last year. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, 12 rows of it. Last year I had like eight. They weren't quite as long as this last year either. Last year it did really well. This corn did really well. I had two, about every stalk, believe it or not, had two ears to the stalk. Uh, it did really well. I gave a bunch of this corn away because we once we our defreeze is full, I can't do anything else with it. This year, if it makes, I'm going to buy another defreeze is what I'm going to do. I'm going to fill it up with peas and corn and whatever else and then give away whatever whatever i can't fit in it but anyways my oldest boy and i planted this corn probably the beginning of march i think it was the first or second week in march i'd have to look back to see it's done really well i laid it by just the other day and what I mean by, when I say lay it by, it's what the old people used to say. I came in, I threw my ammonia nitrate down the middle of each row. I came in with my tiller. I don't work it with my tractor because my garden is small and I can't just work it through. But anyways, I came in with my tiller and the plow behind it and I plowed it and that plow throws dirt onto this side and that side. It'll turn that ammonia nitrate under the dirt for the corn to use. Uh, then I'll take the hoe and I'll pull the dirt up to the base of the stalks. You can kind of see how it makes a row here. And the reason I do that is so that that corn will grow a secondary root system on it. And what that does is it actually makes that, that corn stalk a little more resilient to the, to the wind and the storms. You know, you get a lot of spring storms and summer storms that blow in with some pretty heavy wind and it, at times will lay your corn down well if you do this to it it won't doesn't always work but it definitely helps with it and it also helps to add nutrients to that stalk so it's laid by the only thing i'm gonna do is kind of spray it for bugs to keep the the bugs off of it you know you get those worms in the end of the corn and that's aggravating it's not to, when you go to shuck your corn and clean it and everything i don't like that so i take care of it i spray it to keep those out of here and that's about the only thing left that i have to do to this corn anyways guys that's the video of the garden that's what we've got planted this year hopefully that's this video was interesting enough to watch and if you stuck around this far i appreciate it 
Uh, if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button. Uh, I appreciate every one of them. I appreciate all you guys watching my videos. I haven't put one out in a while, but I'll try to keep you guys updated. I'll come out and do an update video on the corn and the peas and everything and let you see how it's going from, from this point forward. How about that? Anyways, thanks again. God bless you, and God bless America. Thank you for watching.